GM and welcome to this episode of the Staking Podcast. I'm Del Rey, and today we are sitting down with Cron Cats. This is going to be like a sequel because back in September we did a great Twitter spaces with them and knew more about their product. In regards to Cron Cats, they want to automate all that you can imagine in crypto. Really interesting project with some good use cases. Stay tuned. So, uh, recording started, and yes, guys, we're live and recording with the one and only Mike Purvis from Croncats. Did I get that right? Yes, yes. Awesome, Mike. Thank you for joining the podcast. How are you feeling, buddy? Feeling good. Um, as we sort of mentioned pre-show, this is like, you know, right on the back of SBF stuff happening. So this is a really sad day for crypto. So really kind of keeping it somber. It feels like a moment of silence, actually. Um, I didn't realize how bad this was. Sometimes there are stories where you can kind of get the gist of what's happening by just seeing tweets and people you follow. Uh, this is one of the cases where uh, it it's actually probably worthwhile for everyone to really like soak in what is really happening and what is the reputational hazard um, to the whole industry. And just uh, it's almost like a 9-11 event, but like for our, our whole industry. And so it is a somber day. Um, and it's a really weird day for me, too, because we've just had some team meetings this morning for Croncat, uh, which is like automated uh, task management on on blockchain and kind of like adding very complex, like if this, then that solutions on the blockchain um, and interchain is what we've chosen to, uh, you know, our, our, our home to be. And in the, in the same day that all of this sort of drama is happening and, you know, we're really feeling this as humans. We're also discovering just kind of monumental breakthroughs, in my opinion. I don't know if I can give like necessarily all the details, but I think we've just realized that Croncat will really be able to unlock a tremendous amount of um, like use cases uh, beyond the ones that we've already talked about. I think before, um, you know, the, the second time that we, uh, we were able to talk to you, Delray, the first time um, we talked a lot about some of the use cases for Croncat in terms of... Uh, Payroll, for instance, like you have a DAO, you want to pay members of the DAO. You don't want to have someone sort of like glued to either, you know, their, you know, their phone or their browser extension. They have to constantly be, you know, making a, a, a proposal to pay people in a DAO in this particular example um, or, some, you know, like at your computer and whatnot. And Croncat, for instance, will be able to you can just set and forget and say, please, here's a bunch of money. Please, like, hold on to this money. and give it to these people on these days and that is just a, a like one use case that is a tremendous um sort of like example of what can be done and like it's just freeing us from always having to interact with our with you know with our wallets manually um there's a lot more cool stuff coming and um yeah so like it's only exploded even bigger uh since the last time we talked Delray. Oh, man, I, I'm so happy to hear that, bro. I, I remember that first Paces that, that we did. And and then after that, I met you at the Cosmoverse. And, and you guys were also doing connections and also hanging out with people and, and, and creating some stuff during the event as well. It was really nice. So uh, be, before we dive deeper, deeper in Croncats and, and what's new since the last time we, we speak, uh, let me know what what's up, man. What, what how's life after Cosmoverse? We already saw the, this event from FTX, which is really sad, but other things has happened as well. So how's how's your life after Cosmoverse, which was like a month ago? Yeah, wow, it's been a month. Um, that was a tremendous trip. I think that just also getting out of the country and just going to a brand new place. We were there for fourteen days, and that was just like really an amazing kind of like mental reset, and. You know, I, as a reminder, if people didn't see the last uh, or listen to the last interview with uh, Del Rey, we have had this Croncat idea, um, me and one other co-founder, for a little over two years. And uh, we started building this on a different protocol, a uh, near protocol, and learned a lot. Um, it, we, we didn't really have the same sort of like activity in the ecosystem that I'm kind of seeing in the interchain. And there's all kinds of reasons for that. But I, but you know, but I think that the interchain is just so spread out that everyone is like kind of building their own thing, and they're already like collaborating and wanting to use other projects' uh, tools. And that 
that is basically what we need for Croncat to succeed. I mean, every project that um, comes along is obviously going to need users and, and, and a solid use case and all of that. But uh, in particular, Croncat needs like other people who see the vision and who are willing to to say, oh, wow, this whole thing could be automated. Oh, well, th this changes like the entire game. Um, it actually and, helps. Yeah, I, I feel like we're, we're also learning from the community as well, because in the beginning, there are some, you know, simple use cases where it's like, OK, I don't want to do a repetitive thing. Maybe the first thing that comes to mind if you're in the, in the interchain is. Well, you know, one thing that I do almost every day is I like stake and claim, compound, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> I claim and I restake, and and you know, you have like these apps, you know. So you know, so for me, I'd be using like Cosmos Station or Kepler or something. You can just kind of click around and do that manually. Um, so that is something that Croncat can do. And then, but then that that's also such a good use case that we have other projects. I think there's like, you know, well, it, yeah, there's like multiple projects, including like Yieldmost and others, and, and and like restake that are like coming in and saying. Hey, that's that one problem about you automatically claiming and and like restaking. We're gonna handle like that one thing. And so on, honestly, like at Croncat, I you know like we all love that people are built, building stuff for this use case. And I mentioned this um, during the Hackwasm uh, hackathon that happened about a week after Cosmoverse. But like I want to reiterate that like like I think we believe that the pie is pretty big. There's like enough pie to go around. And so Croncat is not like, you know, no, we're doing the claim and restake, like whatever. If you want to do it with Croncat, then do it. Um, there's probably I, like, I love the yield most UI. I think it's like in a really good space. And um, so, so, so like we, you know, got to see like the different kind of use cases that are happening, like with this, while we were at Cosmoverse had a really awesome lunch with like the yield most people, for instance, um, but I think like the, the one of the takeaways too from Cosmoverse was we just had people that I didn't really recognize like coming up and like saying hello and like oh my gosh like we are so and so we are going to be using Croncat as a major component in our project and it was like it was oh. like wow uh, you know who are you <laughs> um, and that was that was like very special because um, you know kind of tying this back to what I said earlier like we had already built a version of Croncat on a different blockchain and we didn't really have um, we had to work really hard to try to get people to want to use it. And so this is sort of the opposite problem where we're like, oh my gosh, people are coming to us and they have ideas. And, um, you know, uh, we, we, we've been really focused on the sort of what do everyday users want? And so that's why I brought up the, you know, claiming and restaking. We're also finding out cool stuff like talking to Shane from Stargaze, you know, co-founder of Stargaze, which is like the NFT platform on the inner chain. Um, and and he's brought up some things where it's like, oh, we could use this to remove stale bids on an NFT auction. We can use this for other kind of like, you know, protocol cleanup almost. You can like kind of sweep through and like clean stuff up that doesn't need to be there anymore um, instead of you, instead of having someone go through or having some like some server somewhere that runs like a, a Web2 cron job that is just doing this. Um, so So we're actually getting to explore like, not just like for end users, but like for other smart contracts and other like entire projects and also for the protocol level. So I think our challenge right now is to, you know, keep keep the boat going in the same direction and not get, you know, too excited about things, but, um, you know, really offer the best value to as many people as we can. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. I, I, I believe I told you this when I met you at the, at the Cosmoverse. I love the energy you guys are, are putting <laughs> in this, bro. And I believe I also said that in the spaces. I will leave the link in the description when we publish this, whatever we publish it. And and yeah, bro, I mean, it, it's good to hear that besides uh, focusing on hel helping regular users, uh, also networks are seeing the value in Croncats, uh, which I find amazing. Uh, real quickly, maybe you can say three use cases for users and maybe other use cases you have heard for protocols. Sure, yeah. Um, I I think the the DAO payroll is going to be really massive, um, and that and that is being able to like pay someone. Uh, and there's kind of two ways you can do this. Actually, you could you can say I'm going to you know create a Croncat task, which costs very little, by the way. Um, I I may want to like you know this is important to note that like. 
we like the Croncat co-founders are a little bit crazy in the fact that like we are really not like the whole the whole time we've been like this is something that blockchain needs this is like like what's going to level up blockchains a lot um and so the idea of taking a big percentage of like transaction fees and all that is something that we've like fought against a lot so this is really supposed to be something that a community can own and really something that's going to unlock like the next level uh, so one way that you can do DAO payrolls, for instance, is you would give, you create a Croncat task that says, you know, Delray, Mike, and Misha are people that are going to get paid a certain amount. And you would be giving the Croncat manager, this is like the primary smart contract that is like keeping track of these tasks. You would give that some funds that it then automatically like doles out and it, it will never be capable of doling them out like in an incorrect way it'll always you know you know make sure that it's on schedule so that's one way to do it um however that's that's you giving the croncat manager funds and we're of course you know very um careful in what we're doing and so we've already started uh, discussions about um security audit which we want to do you know before anyone starts sending tons of funds there so another approach that some folks are going to do possibly dow dow actually is you would have croncat kind of like store your task but the task would not be like hey remember that money that i just gave you start giving that money out to these people instead you would say hey croncat we have this like much smaller smart contract that you know we have audited and it's going to kind of like hold on to your money in a really safe way and keep track of like how much you owe this person, how much you owe this person. And then Croncat is sort of like acting as the heartbeat. So the Croncat task would be like, hey, um, DAO payroll escrow contract. You'd probably have a much better name than that. Please go ahead and like make payments right now. And it would pay all the people that you know needed to be paid. Um, and so, 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 so that's an idea of like using Croncat, but it's not like all the logic is inside. Croncat that you have your own contract and you're able to just call that using Croncat. I think that's like really amazing. Uh, one that I got to see happen live um, this past weekend, myself and um, the other co-founder flew down to San Francisco and we're hacking on some stuff and dollar cost averaging. I got, I got to see that like really like happening live. And so dollar cost averaging, I feel like every time I hear, I hear that, I my, my brain is like, oh, well, like what is that again? But all it means is like you just, you just put in a little bit of money into something that you believe in, like a little, uh, uh, you know, a little bit at a time. Um, exactly. And, and, yeah, um, <laughs> it's a very simple strategy, but also, I mean, it's so simple, but it's also like a really good way to not kind of like get get lost in the craziness. And, you know, perhaps you can also use this for like, you know, like when, you know, when the market comes back, you can say, hey, I'm going to take like. Uh, you know, twenty percent of the money I made from this LP pool, I'm going to put it into something stable. Like that's kind of an, another idea that you can sort of automate with uh, w uh, with Croncat. So that I'm sort of like l like lumping in together like dollar cost averaging, and then there's other terms like um, TWAP and all and all this kind of stuff. That's going to be that's going to be massive. Do, do what? I'm I'm sorry. Uh, TWAP. It's like time weighted average. Um, yeah, like yeah, it kind of falls into the same sort of like you know, simple DeFi rules that you can just set and forget. I think that's going to be like really, really important. Um, so the, so payroll, that. And then one that I have been thinking about for a long time. Um, and this is, this yeah, this is a little bit alpha in the sense that alpha that is not built yet. <laughs> well, hey, well, hey, we love the alpha guys. Yeah. <laughs> and, and alpha that we haven't really talked about this, uh, you know, on, on your show yet is we're just starting to see the emergence of like, many possibilities the one that i think is like extremely interesting would be like subscriptions so you can say like hey i you know i like del rey i like django i like crypto cedo i i'm gonna like give them like this much per month you know i'm gonna give them like whatever like six juno a month or something um how are you gonna do that without croncat like i don't really think you can or you know in, in a very easy way and so there's a little bit of a road to get there but, um, you know, like if you start thinking about what that means to be able to sort of set and forget a subscription for like a service or someone that you want to support, and it's all just going to work on blockchain, I think you start to like have the hopefully like mind bending uh, experience that like, oh, like, you know, this might be 
not just kind of a cool tool that is like a hot new app, but like this is like maybe going to be like changing fundamental things and how, you know, what we can do uh, with blockchain. Yeah. And, and that's kind of always been the point. Um, so I, I am very, very excited for that. And I think that at this point, we are facing that really fun moment where um, there's just not enough of us. <laughs> and, we're, and I'm just so excited. Like, you know, I, I want to just like stop what I'm doing and just like start building subscriptions. But then I'm like, oh, no, like we're doing a really, you know, you know, really cool thing with like, if this, then that offer blockchain and kind of like nailing down how that happens. Um, so, so, so for me, it's just been kind of like put on your blinders a little bit. There's so much exciting stuff going on, but like, you know, we really got to ship this. So it's fun. I mean, it, it's in that space where like you just kind of wish that you as a human didn't need to sleep. So you could just keep like building the thing. Um, so we're all just like super passionate right now. Oh man, I totally get what you're talking about. Sometimes I wish, I could work in everything all the time. I wish I could clone myself. Some days I wish the days had more than 24 hours. But <laughs> well, we, we do what we can. And about this uh, little alpha on the on the subscription subscription and stuff, uh, really cool. Uh, let me, let me tell you. At the moment, I only know about this app called Patreon or Patreon, mm -hmm. and and people can do that. You can go ahead and and on a monthly basis, donate to any creator that you like that is on the platform. However, you got to use your email to use the platform. You got to use your name. You got to put your credit card information, your debit card information, right? So I'm assuming that in case you come up with something like this or similar to this, it's going to be very crypto-based that I just will need to connect my wallet and that's it, right? Yeah, and you know, like when you... like pretend like we're talking to someone who's never heard of crypto and maybe we are like you know 45 minutes into like a good conversation at a party and they're starting to understand and you know, it's like oh, okay so so crypto is like sort of community owned money and it's an alternative to like you know the stuff that your country you know may print and whatnot and then if we were to immediately say and we don't even have patreon yet like they'd be like what isn't that all, isn't all that is just like giving someone some money at a certain time. It's like very, it's very like primitive, right? Like, but we don't even have that yet. Um, That's right. And it, it's not really to dog on our, on our um, progress necessarily, but it is also kind of a, a gut check on like where we are. And I think I mentioned this too, in the last, uh, the last time we spoke that like, you know, one of my mantras now is like, you know, this is very exciting what we're doing. Like we, as in like web three and just trying to, you know, eliminate middlemen and have community money. And I think this is like kind of the evolution of society and the evolution of technology. And it, there's kind of no stopping it. And we're all just part of this, you know, um, space race right now. Um, but but the truth is that we're, Web3 is not ready yet. It is like really being built, like right now. And, you know, we should all realize that like, we don't have Patreon yet on uh, blockchain that shows how immature it is and that's actually like a good thing it's not like that, that should make you feel very excited it, 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 if you're any kind of dev or builder or, or like visionary or anything it's like wow it's that green field right now yeah. um, and I, I mean it's, it's honestly so, like you know so, someone who's watching this might even like want to make a subscription thing like I have my own ideas but like this is this one of those times where it's like there's tons of pie everyone can just like what else can you unlock, you know, like, but like besides subscriptions, besides, you know, yeah. Anyway, it, it, it's going to be great. And we're like hoping that we can find more people who like see the vision. Um, but it, it, I'm also realizing to kind of like change topic a little bit. It's funny where I, okay. So I went to Cosmoverse and I heard the talk about mesh security, for instance. And then I, I heard it again. At the uh, Hack Wasm, I think. Um, I, 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 were you at Hack Wasm? That was that was kind of afterwards. I was not there. That was like the next okay. weekend after Cosmoverse. I have you. I have yeah. the shirt though, but but uh, <laughs> I didn't go. Nice. Um, yeah. So during during the hackathon, that was um, Ethan Frey, Jake Cartnell, and, and Sonny Agarwal like actually like implemented like like a large like proof of concept for mesh security, and so I got to watch it like live. And um, I thought I got it. And then I watched a bankless interview, actually, with uh, Sonny and Zucky. Um, and 
then I got it. <laughs> this was like maybe like a, you know like a week later, and so it was one of these cases where someone says like the punchline to the thing they're building, and and you're like, oh okay, I think that's pretty cool. But then I didn't get it for like a while later until it was like rephrased in a certain way, and now I'm kind of like almost feeling like maybe maybe that's similar with Croncat, where you can say, you know, like the punchline is like, oh my gosh, you can automate tasks you don't have to be glued to your wallet all the time you can even have tasks where it's like if this then that like please do this thing for me if you know the price reaches this or like if this dow dow proposal passes or like if any any other condition that happens on chain right so like maybe that punchline is like too broad and vague that like it's going to be hard to get into people's heads the same way that that happened to me from mesh security so it, i i really enjoy this I, I you know i love like trying to explain things to people when i worked at near protocol for over 2 years i made a bunch of videos about how like the key management worked and how smart contracts worked and all this and i really like kind of enjoy that so um i'm taking this as a, like a really fun challenge like to, you know who are the people out there that like maybe don't understand it and how can i get them to like the same same place that like that i had my aha moment with mesh security for instance so mm -hmm. uh, i am always i'm always looking forward to like bridging that gap that's awesome man thank you for sharing uh b before we move over, over to the next topic i'm curious how you f how you felt uh working directly with the names like Sony and Jake on this hack was some were, were they welcoming? Uh, can you expand a little on your experience during hack was Yeah, I, I think it was a, it was a just a great time. Like I, you know, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll share. You were talking about if you're talking about kind of like feelings on this. I think this is a good time to mention. Like, so I resigned from Near Protocol about six or seven months ago. And I kind of knew a lot of people there. I kind of knew the scene really, really well. And so I resigned because it, I, I just felt like I had other things to build and I wasn't really being a, like the builder that I wanted to be. Um, so I resigned and I remember watching a an old Cosmoverse. I guess it was the first Cosmoverse in Lisbon. Um, I was watching a video and it was Sunny Agarwal and he had this crazy hair on and he was doing this speech. And I was watching that kind of alone in my living room and the camera panned around the audience and I looked around and I was like, wow, I don't know anyone in this scene. I know zero people. I don't even know the person that's talking. I don't even know what his name is, you know? And I had this like very sinking feeling that like, oh my gosh, if I'm going to try to build something on a different blockchain, I am starting all over again, all over again. And um, zero. That, yeah, that, that was like, that, that actually like hurt for a little bit. I was like, oh, wow, like, did I do the right thing? Like, this is going to be so much work. And I remember like, like specifically to answer your question, I remember there was one time during the hackathon when I was in one of the, the back rooms and I had my like orange bean bag and it was like posted up over there and I could hear like Jake and Sonny and they were like, you know, like off to the side and Teddy Knox was, you know, it was over there doing some some more cool stuff. And I walked down the hall and I saw like um, Josh from Osmosis and a bunch of people eating pizza. And I just had this moment just like, oh, I kind of know these people now. Finally, like I actually finally know these people and they're all like, you know, we're bonding. Like, yeah, they're like waving and we're all working on stuff. And like I can ask questions and people are like actually coming up to me and asking about stuff because I ended up doing this weird proto buff thing it was a little, little bit strange and people wanted some advice about. And so, yeah, like, you know, you know, just kind of talking about feelings, it feels really good to be able to like find such a welcoming ecosystem where everyone just kind of helping each other out. And um, it was amazing. It was, it, it, it was probably the best hackathon I've ever like been to. And people were like really answering questions that, and, and you know, you know, what's funny is the thing that I tried to build ended up being impossible to build right now. Um, but I was able to sit next to one of the top people from Confio. Confio is the company that um, has built like Cosmwasm. Cosmwasm is like the module mm -hmm. in, uh, in that, that, that lets people build Rust smart contracts. And so I was trying to build this thing, but I wasn't sure if I was doing it right. And then I had kind of like hearing from like the horse's mouth, like, oh, actually, you discovered something that like can't be done quite yet. You know, sorry that this sort of like interrupts oh. your hackathon project. But I, I actually took that as like, you know, I, I, I took it as a huge compliment. It's like, cool. Like, thank you for letting me know. Because if I were just sitting in this room, like I usually am, and I'm trying to do something, 
I would just be in my head being like, what, what did I do wrong? And not sure if I did anything right. But, um, you know, even if these hackathons are just like once or twice a year, it's just so worth it to fly out and be able to just like, you know, kind of pester someone for one second and say, am I crazy or is this supposed to work? Um, and yeah, I, I, I got to like leave with like really good vibes from that. Wow, man, that's that's so good to hear. I should I feel so happy uh, hearing this from you. I mean, uh, the the Cosmo, I believe the Cosmos ecosystem needs more developers, right? And and I love your experience, man. I believe I kind of follow like the whole process when you announced you were migrating to Cosmos uh, from near, uh, and 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 it makes me so happy that you were able to come in, say hi. This is what I got. This is what I'm building, and people just receive you and and compliment you and give you feedback, and and it's amazing, man. It's amazing. Uh, a, a little parenthesis here, right? Uh, I haven't asked you about your introduction. What did you do before? Because we spoke about all that in the in our previous session. So what I will do, like I said, is I will leave the link for the recording, and people can go back there and listen. So where you're coming from, your crypto background, and all that kind of stuff. But for now, let's focus on the present and the future, right? Uh, uh, on this developer topic, uh, what is something that you would say to developers that haven't found the Cosmos ecosystem? Hmm. Yeah, that 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 is a really good question. This is something that I think about a lot. Is like we there's a bunch of smart people trying to solve really tough issues all the time on Twitter. Like I, I think like I, anyone is re like fully like in love with Twitter, you know, it, 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 but, but it's a wonderful tool. And this is where everyone is like talking about things. Um, I, I, I think that it's maybe a little bit more of a natural instinct for many people to kind of like, stick to yourself, stick to your project, you know, like heads down. We haven't, we have enough work to do. Like, like, why are you talking to all these, like people, why are you spending so much time being social on Twitter and stuff? Um, for whatever reason, like the cosmos ecosystem is just like all day, every day. Yes. There's like drama that kind of keeps things going. Um, but like, I, I'm just constantly seeing people saying like, Hey, I, you know, I'm trying to reduce the block time. And whenever I try to make it below three seconds, this kind of thing happens. And then, you know, like this is an instance where I, I, you know, I, I, I'm not a very strong developer, honestly, um, but I, I was able to chime in on something where I like literally looked through all of GitHub for this one flag that people use in Cosmos, uh, like validators, basically. And I was able to find something and share it on Twitter. And then uh, a soft from, you know, secret network was like, oh, wow, like, that actually fixes this one issue that I had. And I'm like, so like there's just this bubbling discussion of like what's going on. So I, I think if you're just like curious about what the hell is happening with web three, um, certainly this must, must be happening in other ecosystems too, but like it, it really feels like interchain is this place where there's like a massive like exchange of ideas. And, and even to the point of like, you know, like projects are helping other parts of the stack too, almost always. Like I, yeah. I was talking to, I think like Stride, I, I went up to their booth at Cosmoverse, which is in uh, Columbia. And they were talking about how they are one of the first people to really use interchain accounts, uh, which is like, you have this one account on a, on a blockchain, but it's able to kind of like call your other account on a different chain. It's really, really cool. Not many people are like fully using it in, in uh, production yet. And I just talking to uh, Stride about that and they were saying, oh yeah, we, we helped give back to this part of the stack, this part of the stack. And so there's like all this overlap where it doesn't feel like anyone's kind of waiting on anyone else to ship there, you know? And I mean, and, and also in some cases, like you have like, um, uh, you know, like osmosis, like wanted some stuff in the, uh, a Cosmos SDK and they just forked it. And now there is some like discussion about how their version is better now because they just like took it and ran with it. And um, I think that is the sort of like pioneering spirit that I'm seeing here. Like no one's waiting for permission. They're just kind of like building. Um, that is really cool. I think also one thing like maybe on the opposite side of that, like kind of like a, I wouldn't say it's a weakness, but like, 
you know, to be super honest about where we are as like developers in the interchain, I feel like there are many developers, but there are not many, many developers. And until we get many, many developers, um, there is a lot of work to be done in terms of like tooling. Like sometimes you, you know, as a developer, you have to write the same kind of long uh, terminal command over and over and over again. And it's kind of like not that, not that great. Or there's, there's some things that just take up a lot of your time. Um, and so we, 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 we get to have a discussion soon, I think about like, what does it mean to provide tooling to the ecosystem? There's a bunch of people who are just going to create their own tools um, because they need it. And how can we sort of like backfill them, possibly compensate them? Um, and so like to the people who are developers who are wanting to like check out the interchain, if you look at it and you say, oh boy, like this one particular part is clunky. Like, I don't think that's a diss to the interchain at all. I think you should be excited and be like, yo, I can make a CLI that's going to kick ass now. Like, like you can, you can, you can make your mark. You can like really make your mark. Um, totally. I, 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 I think that's really exciting um, personally. So, so, so yeah, to, to all the developers, if you see stuff that you think, you know, could be better, see if anyone else is doing it and step in and like, you know, there, there are grants that a lot of them are like retroactive, meaning like, Hey, sorry, we like lost a lot of money giving random people money. And that's, that's not really going to work out. But if you build something like show us and we're, we're going to give you money for it. So it should be, it, it should enthuse people, I think. Oh yes, man, I agree with you. And and, and for me, I love uh, being part of this ecosystem, right? Uh, I'm very thankful for the developers that we have, right? And 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 yeah, meeting people like you, man, it's crazy. It, it's it's super crazy and how random this is. This actually is. But I'm very happy to hear your perspective on on how things are and and how you're doing, more, uh, man. So talking about the future, as I said, and we're almost wrapping the wrapping this up. You tell me the subscription-based alpha, right? That is not like the main focus right now. So if you could expand a little on your main focus right now in Chromecast, and I don't know, what's what's the next in the pipeline from the for this quarter of the year, for the remaining of the year? Yeah. So um, I think we get to do episode number three with you, Del Rey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come, I, come in, come in. Because <laughs> I, I think that there's some stuff that um, is not ironed out that we like can't really mention. Um, I, I will say that like basically we got back in Cosmoverse and we were like, wow, like this thing is like actually happening, um, you know, and, 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 you know, bigger things are, are planned. Basically, we think that this could this is like the, the time to like really make this um, official. And so I, I, I won't say like much more other than that. But like, we're kind of like ramping up and getting like, serious doing kind of big boy stuff uh, for Croncat. And um, but uh, we haven't lost at all the sort of focus that we talked about the last time we spoke and that this should be like a community thing. And like, we want the creation of tasks to be extremely affordable, perhaps like ridiculously affordable. Um, and that that has not changing either. Um, but yeah, we will have some kind of more announcements about that. I, I, I would say in the immediate term, like we've talked about the the payroll already, like the next thing that we've been doing it, uh, is really around like, let's make sure that we can do swaps. You know whether it's Juno swap or uh, osmosis, like really getting that in there. And um, you know, as a reminder, we did did get a grant from osmosis and uh, OGP. So that is like we're, we we are like kind of on track also like for 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 that grant. Um, and you know, to be honest, one of the most interesting things that are involved in any of the use cases is really what happens when you start thinking about tasks that have rules. You know, so like do this ta do this action if, if this rule says you says you know evaluates to true, if this one evaluates to true. Um and you know, I'll 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 just leave it at, at that kind of that that like there's a there's a puzzle in there about how you do this right. And like if you nail it, um it's gonna be very, very extendable. And I, I feel like there's gonna be so many use cases, it's gonna be kind of ridiculous. Um, and, and another thing to, to mention too, is like, we are like hardcore, not just trying to be the ones that are like 
we're going to make the use cases, we're going to do whatever, like that, that's not a good um, way to think. And this also, by the way, applies to what I was talking about before with like people needing tools. The worst situation that we can get into is like, we have many developers, but not many, many. The worst situation we can get into is like having to beg developers to fix this one thing because you need it. So like, we always need to have this, like all of us need to have this like framing of like, how can we build something so that like it's extendable and that other people can like chip in and like, you know, be, uh, be a part of it. So for Croncat, that really means this idea of like recipes. Okay. So a recipe would be um, something like, okay, I want to like make this swap during these certain circumstances. And if my balance is above this, then, you know, turn into stable coins if it's below this you know whatever or or, or you can say um i have a i have a dow a dow 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 and like when a triple proposal dow. <laughs> triple dow <laughs> dow cubed and like when this one thing happens with a proposal or when this one thing happens with adding a member then you can actually automatically create a task that will have these rules and so it, it can get very kind of like complex and creative um, and what we want to do here is have like other people, not us, create these like recipes of like that are very useful that other people are going to want to use. Mm -hmm. And every time that a person like says, hey, that's a freaking good idea. That probably took that person a long time to figure out. I would like to use that, please. When they create the task from someone else's recipe, they get the, the creator gets royalties. Now, this doesn't awesome. mean that like every single time my task runs the other person's getting money and like oh no this is like too no just just when you say hey good idea i'm going to create that task then boom there's you know there, there is some incentive for other people so yeah it, it all goes back to like um maybe not thinking too specific on use cases and trying to build like foundations that will like invite other people to like really start using this and and be incentivized uh, to use it Totally, man. Wow, this sounds amazing. <laughs> I'm, I'm super pumped right now uh, with this conversation, Mike. Again, thank you so much for joining. Um, I love that you mentioned automate, uh, automatization, uh, do it automatic, automatically. You say that, uh, you said that a lot, right? But I love it, man, because that is how things I mean, that, that's how we have things right now at the moment. Uh, in the legacy world or web to world, whatever you want to call it, uh, you are very accustomed to just do one click and you do everything, right? So uh, I believe your focus is bringing that into the web tree, right? So there is less friction for users. Uh, I would love to see that uh, developing. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I'm going to see it, right? Oh, so, yeah. Great conversation with you, Mike. Again, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. Before we go, uh, I don't know, is there anything else that, that we didn't cover that maybe you want to say uh, now or something extra you want to add for the things we, we talk about? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess like I always like kind of hate being cagey, but I also feel like we'll, we'll have a better third um, uh, hangout with you. And, and I look forward to that. And then, you know, honestly, like today, this is November 10th, 2022. Like... Yeah, this is a really sad day. Like I, I, you know, I'm very excited about this, but like if there's any sort of parting words, it is just like take care of yourself, like go out for a run if you need to, uh, touch grass. Uh this this is like a hard day and and I know everyone's busy building and shipping, but like make sure you take some time to like kind of absorb what's happening uh in our in our arena and and, and kind of what that means and it doesn't mean to me you know, necessarily feel bad about it, but like it's okay to um, to feel it. And so I hope everyone kind of like allows himself that time uh, to do that. Awesome, man. Well, with that being said, uh, I won't add anything extra, bro. Thank you so much again, Mike. And, and thank you all for listening for the for this episode of the Staking Podcast. So see you in the, in the part three, right? Number three. <laughs> all right. That was all for this episode. We hope you found this valuable. Until the next episode. And remember to follow us on Twitter and join our Discord and Telegram.